Okay, so naturally we're going to start with the first game in the trilogy, titled simply Renegade. This was released by Imagine Software in 1987 for the Sinclair Spectrum and is of course based on the Taito arcade game. Okay, so we're at the uh, start screen, just going to define our keys for Renegade. And you'll see that basically it's a side scrolling sort of beat them up, etc. You are the guy in the middle and you've got to um, get rid of all those lot before uh, you can uh, move on to the boss. The boss usually comes out uh, when you've got rid of about uh, two or three enemies per level. They take a couple of hits each. You can get rid of them by uh, kicking or throwing them off the edge like that. It's a very satisfying move. And you see the boss has come out now. Now this level sort of set on uh, the uh, Renegade Land equivalent of the uh, the London Underground. Uh, it's like the Northern Line by the looks of it. Um, and you are um, basically it's a fight to the death in each uh, each particular level. There is some kind of story, but uh, I didn't look at the instruction pamphlet. So now you can see one of the slight quirks of the game. There's one henchman left and the boss, and they're both sort of next to each other, um, and they kind of blend in, bleed into each other, which can be a little bit confusing at times as it sometimes makes it look like there's only one character. Now, this uh, uh, Renegade Arcade game was uh, really, really popular, and um, Ocean um, got the rights to do conversions of it, I think, and um, it was actually published by Imagine, but uh, I believe that when um, obtaining permission, or obtaining the license to the game, that they also got permission to make some sequels of their own which were to be target renegade and renegade 3 which you'll see videos on of later now uh, there we go we've finally beaten up the big butcher oh no we haven't he's uh, he's coming back for more um but uh, now it's just a one-on-one -on -one fight and we need him in the nuts and we've got him a uh, little uh, jingle there and then on to the next level let's see how we do this one's always fun, trying to boot the people off their bikes as they come um, past kind of like a dockside uh, uh, setting. All the, the guys in the background ready to come in and kick the absolute shit out of you um, to add insult to injury if you were to get run over. And they come out now. This uh, always uh, amazes me, the, uh, the, the hero, uh, his ability to hang around in the... Uh, the most horrible of areas in uh, a renegade land. Um, whatever baddies there are up there, they seem to drive Fiat Puntos. Um, but never mind. Um, I managed on this level to just sort of get into a kind of just kick him in the head um, routine, and it seemed to sort of work for a bit. But um, as you can see, the boss comes out in a, in a second, and um, I'll show you one of the better, more satisfying elements of the game. Um, in that you can see the energy bar um, down the bottom there. Now the boss has got a completely full one, but he's just as susceptible to being chucked off the edge as, uh, as the others. And if you manage to do that, it's a brilliant feeling. <laughs> just like that. Yay! Okay, uh, now we are hanging around um, outside a sauna with some... Uh, lovely looking girls and uh, big butch dave in the background who's obviously the boss and he's gonna come and uh, kick our heads in in a short while uh, once his ladies have softened us up um i don't think there's going to be any happy endings in this alleyway Ooh, uh, but um as each level goes on the the, the, the villains um need more and more hits to to get them down etc um I'd have just run away. Here comes Big Butcher Dave. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. He do not look like he can move that fast, but he, sure, he's a bit of a whirlwind when he gets going. But the graphics on this game for a Spectrum uh, was really, really good. You know, it's nice and colourful, takes advantage of the Spectrum's um, lack of ability in this area, really, and, and creates quite a good atmospheric feel. Um, you know that it, the place looks like a shithole. Um, because they've managed to convey that. Anyway, that's the, uh, the the first Renegade. Okay, that was the Spectrum version of Renegade. Um, 
obviously based on the Taito arcade machine of the same name. Now, the following year, 1988, uh, the first of the sequels appeared, um, Target Renegade. And um, it's a, a, fair to say, it's a huge success. Uh, it's one of my favourite Spectrum games of all time. Um, and it uh, ranks regularly quite highly on... Um, is any in Rome? No. Um, <laughs> ranks as highly uh, in most polls, etc. Most people that you ask, um, it's up there in their list of uh, uh, favourite games. And it takes the, the sort of renegade premise and adds to it really, really well. Um, it adds two player option. Unfortunately, the video you're going to see is um, one player only, because uh, I'm a Billy No Mates basically. Um, it adds the ability to um, pick up weapons uh, and use them, um, which you'll see a couple of times in the in the video as well. Anyway, um, 1988's the year. Uh, Target Renegade by Imagine Software. Okay, so here we are at the title screen uh, for Target Renegade, the sequel, the 1988 sequel. Um, it's a two-player game, so as you can see, I'm going to have to uh, define two sets of keys. Uh, however, being a Billy No Mates with no one to play with, uh, I'm just going to have to pretend on the second player. Um, the second player does not exist. Anyway, the premise is that uh, our hero uh, from the last game, uh, Jim Renegade, has... Uh, gone out shopping with his missus and they're in Nando's and he realises oh I've uh, left the car on uh, uh, down in the uh, the multi-story and uh, the ticket's going to expire in two minutes I best go and put some more money in it anyway by the time he gets there he's uh, he's overdue on the clock and the local parking attendants are all over him um, and want to kick the shit out of him basically um, but they don't know that he's a sort of part-time ninja and uh, proceeds to uh, give as good as he gets, basically. And um, in the middle of the car park, um, whilst leaving his uh, his uh, piri piri chicken to get cold, because uh, he does like a bit of a punch up, does Jim Renegade. Anyway, what the hell am I talking about? Um, as you can see, this still has got uh, a lot of uh, features from the original. There's the first introduction of the weapon that you can carry. Um, as opposed to it being a, a, a something wielded only by the opponents. Um, whenever a weapon is dropped, it does tend to sometimes become a bit of a free-for-all between you and the baddies. Uh, and also between you and the second player, if there is one, um, to, to, to grab the weapon. Anyway, once uh, the parking attendants and, uh, with their Chris Waddle haircuts have, uh, have been dispatched, um, Eventually he goes up to the next level of the, the car park to find his way back to Nando's Where the uh, they keep trying to kill him um, On their motorbikes as well and uh, succeed very nearly um, Until you eventually get the chat off now at the bottom you can see the um, the, the sort of life meter um, which is gradually wearing down. There's another um, hammer coming into play, so you can you can actually direct the um, the flying kicks in this game. Uh, you didn't seem to be able to do that in the first one. Maybe you could, and I just didn't uh, notice it. But instead of just jumping straight up, you can now jump and fly to the side. Um, there we go. And unfortunately, um, so can the baddies. Um, Give him a swift kick in the knackers. Uh, he usually gets rid of him. Is he going to start? Is he going to disappear? Yes, he does. So we pick up the hammer and move to the next level. No, we don't. We've got to kill some more people first. <laughs> there we go. No, we don't. He won't die. Stay down. Stay dead. See, already this is a more fun game than 
the first Renegade, and the first Renegade was a really fun game. Um, a little bit tricky in places. Not to say that this isn't, but uh, that was. Now here I'm going to drop kick this bloke off his bike. Um, still, at least he's wearing a crash hat, which is very responsible um, in this day and age. And it's uh, Target Renegade um, was uh, one of those games that. Um, really sort of everyone um, enjoyed. I don't think I've ever heard or, or read a bad thing about it. There certainly isn't much that um, I don't think can be improved upon um, in relation to um, how fun um, it is to play. Um, the two player uh, edition was just absolutely um, fantastic. You know, if you've ever played this game in two players you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, it also came out on all the other sort of systems, but I, I don't um, don't have any experience of them. You know, the Spectrum is my uh, my favourite, and he's nearly at the exit. And his missus is obviously going to ring him in a minute and say, "Where the hell are you? you know, your dinner's getting cold." But uh, you can't really sort of say, oh, I'm, "I'm being beaten up in the car park," because she'll go, "Yeah, right, of course you are." If only she knew. So this is coming to the end of the first level. Um, why the Chris Waddles don't pick the hammers up, I don't know. Um, but if they don't want it, it's, uh, I'll have it. Oh, there we go. So that now is the end of that particular level. Now, the Renegade Land Tourist Board um, wouldn't be very happy with this game because it's painting it out as a really, really uh, uh, not fun place to visit. It's kind of like the Bay route of the video game world. It's um, you've got a geezer here with a gun. Um, the fortunate thing is, you know, he can also accidentally shoot uh, the enemies, but he can also he's also actually trying to kill you with it. As you can see, he's just shot one of the girls. One of the girls, I hasten to add, that looks like. Uh, She's probably got hairier legs than me, speaks in a deeper voice than me, and when you ask her at the bar what her name is, she'll go, Frank. But uh, anyway, that's a... Uh, oh, he got me with that one, the git. I'm just fighting some women out in the alleyway. Yeah, of course you are, dear. But the... Uh, the whole sort of thing about Target Renegade is is that for everything about it, from its design to the thought that's gone into it, to, um, everything's pitched just right. You know, it's not too difficult, but it's not easy. Um, it certainly makes you work for any sort of victories at it that you have, uh, especially later on when you get the um, the enemies that learn how to sort of dodge and uh, and duck your attacks. Um, which didn't really sort of happen in in the first uh, Renegade. Um, you, you got the uh, the baddies in Target Renegade that will actually duck under your flying kick, so you have to be a little bit smarter in order to to sort them out. Um, now, you know, you wouldn't want to take any of these girls home to meet your mum, I don't think, because uh, she'd probably <laughs> drop kick the entirety of your family, and uh, it's, you know get you into uh, your mum's good books, wouldn't she? A very good uh, character design, um, very good backgrounds. Um, I feel sorry for Joe, who owns that place, because business can't be good um, with all this going on outside <laughs> on a regular occurrence. But uh, hey-ho, no one forced him to open his uh, shoe shine shop there, but he did anyway. Um, keep quiet for a couple of seconds. Whoever Rene is, um, she rules. 
really odd graffiti. Despite being the most ultra-violent place in the, the universe, Renegade Land is uh, quite clean, really. And the phone's ringing. This is Mrs. Going. Where are you? Uh, it's, uh, I'm in the park. Oh, what are you doing in the park? You're supposed to be in Nando's. He's like, well, I just went for a walk. But in essence, it's um, that, that's two videos from the series so far that I've, I've put side by side, and um, you can hopefully see the sort of evolution of the, the series, the, the way that the ideas have, um, have been implemented, etc. Uh, really is um, from what was a, an excellent start to the series. Um, you know, Target Renegade was a, is a fantastic uh, continuation of it. So we're going to move on to Renegade 3 uh, now. Okay, so I'm going to stop this uh, narration as we speak. Goodbye. Okay, so uh, we've gone through two of the free games so far. Um, as you can see, you know, the, the first uh, home conversion, the Spectrum conversion of Renegade was just a fantastic conversion of uh, what was a, a great arcade machine. It's uh, really, really difficult to find anything to fault with it. Um, the only thing I would say is probably... The fact that whenever you die, um, even if you were down to just one baddie left on the screen, that um, when you uh, 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 when you came back to life, um, all those uh, baddies would come back. Whereas on Target Renegade, that fixed that, and uh, you went on to your next life with whatever baddies were sort of remaining on the screen. And also, when Target Renegade came along, it took everything that was good. Um, about the first Renegade, made it better and added some ideas of its own which made it even better. The uh, addition of a, a two-player mode, the addition of uh, melee weapons that you could pick up and use, just made what was already a great game even better. You know, it's just so much fun to play. I and mean, like I said, it it, uh, it dealt with a couple of the niggly issues from um, the first Renegade. And it was massively successful. So because of that success, it's not surprising that uh, the following year, 1989, saw Imagine release uh, a third uh, title in the series. Now, it was imaginatively titled uh, Renegade 3, with a subtitle of the final chapter. Now, I'm going to go straight into the gameplay on this and do some narration of it. This one is a, a bit of a disappointment for me, but I'll discuss as I go through the video why. Um, any comments that you might uh, have about it, either good or bad, you know, let me know. It, just because I didn't like it doesn't mean to say that um, someone out there um, didn't enjoy it. I'm sure lots of people did. Um, but just for me, there were some... Uh, some some things about it that just didn't quite work um anyway have a look and see what you think okay so now we're at uh, renegade 3 um the 1989 um, second sequel to renegade now as you can see and hear it looks and sounds uh fantastic it really um has been nailed to what it looks wise but it just doesn't seem to play very well. Now, the plot is that um, a hero, Jim Renegade, is um, on his way to a uh, Shaking Stevens lookalike competition. And uh, as he's walking down the road, a strange hole opens up in the ground and swallows him up. And he finds himself in this uh, otherworldly dimension. Um, basically, he's gone through time. And he has to uh, beat up um, midget uh, Captain Caveman lookalikes. Uh, camp dinosaurs and uh, someone who keeps trying to throw the world's largest lump of uh, 
poo out of his cave and onto his head. Now, I don't, I don't know what it is about this game. It's just not fun. Um, I don't think it's fun anyway. It's, um, it's not as immediate as Renegade or Target Renegade. Um, it's a lot more complicated. But the enemies, as opposed to being... Um, sort of that they're just annoying um, you can't seem to um, do anything any kind of flying kick like you, you, you could in the um, other renegade games um, just that jump and kick seems to be all you can do if you can do a, a sort of flying leaping kick then you know great but um, I couldn't seem to be able to pull it off and it just seemed to go the game just seemed to generate into this um, irritating sort of mashup between me, the cavemen, and these strange looking dinosaurs who shouldn't be able to punch me given their uh, stupid little arms that uh, dinosaurs have got, but they they can and they do and there's just not, not much that's sort of fun about the game really, I mean it's, I can't fault the uh, the music in it. It's um, it's got a great um, sort of thumping soundtrack going on in the background there. But it seems, um, although we've picked up graphically, we've picked up sonically, gameplay-wise, for me, it's it's just not there. It doesn't. There's no two-player mode like there was in, uh, which really made Target Renegade. And whilst I can see that. They may have wanted to make Renegade 3 different, try something different with it. To me, it hasn't really worked. Um, I am not enjoying this game. Um, there are other levels to it, and uh, there's an Egyptian zone, um, a sort of kind of futuristic zone, I, I think as well. But I, to be honest, I really um, was annoyed by this stage of the first uh, level. I don't really think there's an awful lot in the game that's going to get me sort of going back to try and see the um, other levels. Um, you know, to me, it's easily the weakest of the three Renegade games, um, gameplay-wise. It's certainly the strongest um, in terms of uh, aesthetics and um, sonics. It really does look and sound um, the part. I just wish um, that it was as much fun to play as the uh, previous two entries in the series. Uh, to me, it's it's just not. It's just not there. Um, I can appreciate some people may well have liked it and enjoyed it, and but I, I'm not one of them. Um, I may have enjoyed it at the time, whereas I owned Renegade 2 sorry, Target Renegade and Renegade when they first came out in the Spectrum and I still have the tapes. I never had Renegade 3, so I'm, I'm sort of new to it um, within the last year or so. And, you know, that might have uh, clouded my judgment. Perhaps if I'd have uh, played it in 1989, I'd have enjoyed it more. Um, but I can't see um, that being the case too much, I'm afraid. Um, it's, you know, it's just anticipating every sort of move I'm doing there, and the time is running down, and you know, it's just, it really gets really frustrating to sort of play. Um, just see, you know, it's almost impossible to nail this little midget whacking me with a, a sort of chicken drumstick. Um, and it's not a game I can see myself returning to frequently. Um, I say 10 out of 10 for um, uh, for the, the, the sort of uh, the, the the look of the thing and the uh, the way it sounds, but you know, gameplay wise, uh, it's a disappointing um, final chapter for me. It's the sort of uh, phantom menace of the Renegade world, if you like. Okay, that concludes my review of the Renegade series. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm just going to do uh, a few final thoughts uh, for you.
Okay, thanks for watching. That was uh, Renegade uh, from 1987, Target Renegade from 88, and Renegade 3, the final chapter from uh, 89, uh, all released by Imagine Software for the ZX Spectrum and other computers. Um, Target, sorry, Renegade and Target Renegade, even now, remain um, uh, fantastically playable. Uh, Renegade is. Um, an example of uh, of which there are many of a, a, a fantastic arcade conversion uh, for the Spectrum. Target Renegade takes everything that was good about it, fixes the things that were bad, um, and it just delivers um, an absolute scream. Um, it's so playable. If you can get a second player with the, with the uh, melee weapons, um, <laughs> it, Target Renegade is just an absolute laugh. Me and my mate years ago we used to play that um, on my spectrum around here we play it on his Amstrad it's just um, just hilarious um, and really well made as well uh, Renegade 3 um, as the, the sort of end to the series is is kind of a, like a Marmite game you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it and unfortunately I'm in the camp that doesn't love it. Um, it's not a lazy product by any means. Um, it's by far and away the best looking of the three games. Uh, best sounding of the three games as well I think, um, soundtrack wise. So it's not. It's by no means lazy, it's just missing something gameplay wise. Um, so obviously it's missing Target Renegade's two player mode, um, which obviously was the, the big um, Plus point for that game. Um, the character, as you can see from the, the video, that the sort of enemies in that that first level, the prehistoric zone, are a bit they're just irritating rather than fun. Um, they just annoy you, or they just annoy me. Now I know that I'm not the world's best um, games player. My videos um, you will already have seen, or may have already seen probably highlight that to you <laughs> um, but even so you know it's just missing that 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 sort of spark that made the other two great games um, it just sort of like misses um, really um, doesn't have any kind of replay factor for me I appreciate there's going to be people out there that doing do like it um, but I'm not one of them. It's not a game I can see myself um, coming back to at any time. Um, like I said on the, the sort of narrative, um, I didn't own it at the time it was released. I've only sort of experienced it recently. And I didn't like it when I first played it. And um, I only loaded it again just for the sake of doing this series review. Um, so I don't think that's a very good um, indictment um, for the game. That said, um, you know, it, it does look and it does sound great, but then it doesn't do anything um, Renegade and Target Renegade don't do. Um, it doesn't do it better. Um, it doesn't do anything better apart from the looks and the graphics. Um, it, 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 it's a, It's a very much a th third in the running um, of the three gameplay wise um, but you never know check it out if um, if you haven't you might enjoy it okay thanks ever so much for watching um, if there's any other videos that you'd like to see me do um, gameplay wise etc um, let me know um, I'm gonna be doing a few anyway um, as soon as I'm uh, able to Got a big box of uh, games here what's this one what shall I do yeah. Turbo Outrun? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Thank you very much.